Oh, this is Grumio yet again. I'm going to show you how to make a uh, dagger hair coreless punch shield. And this looks very similar to the Athelan punch shields that a huge amount of people use. It's the same dimensions, but it's made all out of blue foam. It's a lot cheaper, it's a lot lighter. They hold up very well. I've had this one for almost a year. It's been to two in a realm events and Lots and lots of practices and sparring, and I have yet to have a single problem with it. Um, see the size. Um, look like at the construction here. It's got five layers of blue foam. It's got two extra layers where the hand goes. You can see the piece of PVC that runs down the center here. It's got two layers that cover the piece of PVC. It's got a little area cut out for the handle. It's cut about, I don't know, about three to three and a half layers into the shield. Allows your hand to go in there. Um, it's pretty sturdy. I haven't had it fail um, at a weapons check for anything at all. Um, today I'm going to be making a, let's see, I think a, do about a 25 inch round shield. So if, if you're interested in making a rectangular shield, a kite shield, or a heater shield, whatever you're going to do, you can use these same methods and just kind of adapt it. And I like to use 3 quarter inch PVC for the handle. This is one half, which is thinner. And this is probably more what the Athelon shields are like, because they use much thinner handles. So um, if you've got small hands, maybe a half inch is good. Or if you've got bigger hands, 3 quarter inch is probably the way to go see the size difference it's pretty substantial also three quarter inch will probably have um, will hold into your shield better because it's wider and it's going to have more surface area to grip on when you grill and glue it into the shield so if you prefer half inch or three quarters whatever you want to do make sure you get a small amount of that easily easy to do at home depot while you're at home depot get some dap i'm sure you all know what that is also, Gorilla Glue, I prefer the big container just because it's a lot cheaper and if you're going to be in DAG a long time, you're probably going to use it. So, DAP and Gorilla Glue are absolutely essential for this build. Um, your basic foam smithing tools, Sharpie, screwdriver for your DAP, scissors are somewhat helpful, not really though. Um, measuring devices, rulers, tape measures. Also, a, a very rough file or a rasp works very well, it helps to roughen up the PVC. Um, also some cutting devices are good, Zacto knife, um, and for this build I like to use a really sharp um, pocket knife because sometimes you have to cut into several layers of foam at once and it's a little hard to do with a uh, short bladed Exacto knife. Some type of saw is good, I, I don't actually have a saw, I have a like five year old hacksaw blade that I use to cut my PVC. So that's the basics of it. Um, the first step you're going to need to do is figure out how big you want your punch shield. And, I mean, if you're a veteran fighter, you already know what size you're looking for. But if you're somebody new out there, don't build a gigantic shield. I mean, this shield, now I'm six foot, like three, this is a three foot tall shield. And I think this shield is a little bit large for me. It's three feet by two feet. I would not build a shield bigger than this because it's just going to hinder you. As you get better, you learn how to throw more shots, a big shield just gets in your way. I mean, it's nice to have a big shield when you first start out, but you're not going to learn. You're just going to rely on your shield to block everything for you. So you can try to build the smallest shield you're comfortable with, and that's why I'm downsizing my shield to a small punch shield, just because I feel that shield's gotten too big for me, and I'm looking for something new. So once you figure out what size you're looking for, um, I would cut a piece of PVC and make it about four inches shorter than the total length or diameter of your shield and that allows for several layers of foam to be above the ends of the PVC so when it gets checked the checker is not going to feel the core and then once you've done that um, I would get two end caps dap the insides of them and the tops of the PVC and put the end caps on there I wouldn't let the dap dry very long because it's harder to put it on and then once you've done that, I would take a sharpie and mark off a small area of your hand in the center of the piece of PVC, you know, a little bit bigger than your hand. And then after that, take your file or rasp 
and you need to file, file away at everything that your hand is not going to be touching and just do that all the way around and this you know allows your PVC to have some rough surface to bond with the glue and it'll make it be able to stay in the shield a little bit stronger. And then once you have all that done we're going to move on to cutting the foam and starting to glue the body of the shield. Alright well now we have the core done to the shield piece of PVC and I've cut my first layer of foam and since I'm doing a round shield I started off with a fresh roll of blue foam and I cut a the biggest piece I could to fit my shield and since blue foam is not quite wide enough I had to cut a second piece so I put the two pieces together one layer here um, I'm going to cut this out just to make it circular and then I need to cut out a second layer and then we're going to proceed to step two once you have two pieces of foam completely cut out Alright, well, here is my first layer of foam completely cut out. As you can see, it's got a break in it because it's a little larger than standard blue foam. So, I've used this first piece to cut a second piece as a pattern and just traced it. So, here's the second piece. And as you build this, you want to make sure you don't have the, your breaks in your foam at the same place. So, I'm going to alternate these as I build the layers. So now the whole piece is going to go over the broken piece like this. And then the, next, the other broken piece is going to go on this side. And this will help keep your shield a little stronger. And I don't know how well you can see it, but like this piece I have scored with my file. And this piece I have not. Blue foam has a, um, a layer that protects it from water. and. You don't really have to score it, but your dap is going to stick a lot better if you do. So all you got to do is take a very rough file or rasp and just do a pass over the whole entire surface and it will just tear it up a little bit, but it won't hurt your foam too much. So I do this on every piece of foam I use to build shields and swords and spears and basically all my equipment and it just helps it stick better. So basically now what you're going to do is put your pieces together. Um, apply a thin coat of dap to the face and then apply a thin coat of dap to the basically the underside of the next piece you're going to put and you're going to let that dry for a little while and once it's tacky to the touch you're going to flip it over and press the two sides together and let dap do its work and, and then when we have two pieces we're going to move on to the next layer.